Hi again, Psych Scholars. We have looked quite a lot at memory thus far. We have covered the role of neurons, the consolidation theory, memory decline, amnesia, and several descriptions of the organisation of memory. But what about when memory is no longer? What about forgetting? Perhaps the first thing you think of when the word forgetting comes up is that classic scene in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, when Neville Longbottom is sent a rememberall from his gran. Hermione, of course, explains what it is. When the smoke turns red, it means you've forgotten something. Before Neville comes out with the zinger, the only problem is, I can't remember what I've forgotten. It's a bit of a flaw in the business model of the rememberall, really, but it's still vintage Harry Potter. But I digress. Hermann Ebbinghaus, German psychologist who died in 1909, proposed that all individuals tend to forget new information in a similar manner at a similar rate, regardless of its complexity. Possibly, Ebbinghaus's greatest legacy is his forgetting curve, which looks a little bit like this. As can be seen on the diagram, Ebbinghaus suggested that most information is forgotten in the initial period of learning. In particular, the first 20 minutes are particularly prone to forgetting. After the first one hour since learning, the majority of information is forgotten. This diagram is roughly to scale, but perhaps a diagram not to scale would be of use here. Both of the diagrams show that after the first day or two, the rate of forgetting is fairly stable, and forgetting occurs at a much slower rate. We're going to look at some of the reasons why forgetting may occur in the next few videos. But for now, let's try a practice question on Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve. Here is one from the 2013 VCAR exam. It reads, a forgetting curve indicates the amount of information that is A, lost in relation to the percentage of information that is learnt, B, retained in relation to the time since the information was learnt, C, retained in relation to the percentage of information that is learnt, or D, lost in relation to the time since the information was consolidated in short-term memory. What do you think? Let's go through the options. Remember, here is Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve. The first thing we should look at is the axes. On the y-axis, the up and down one, we have level of retention measured in percentage of information learnt. And on the x-axis, the sideways one, we have the amount of time that has elapsed measured in days. Just from this information, we can rule out options A and D of our question. These two options both suggest that the forgetting curve measures how much information is lost. But despite its name as a forgetting curve, we can see that it actually measures how much information is retained. Of course, we can extrapolate how much information has been lost from the curve, but it does not directly measure it. That leaves options B and C. What's the difference between the two? Option B says that the forgetting curve indicates the amount of information retained in relation to the time since the information was learnt. Option C says that the forgetting curve indicates the amount of information retained in relation to the percentage of total information was learnt. If you have been paying attention, you will hopefully be able to recognise that the correct response is option B. Remember, the y-axis shows the retention of information measured by a percentage of total information learnt. And this is in relation to the x-axis, the time that has elapsed. We're not really concerned with how much information is retained when more or less information is learnt, because Ebbinghaus suggests that the rate of forgetting is the same. That's it for the moment on Ebbinghaus and his forgetting curve, but do come back for more. We're looking at four theories of forgetting in the next four videos. Retrieval failure theory, interference theory, motivated forgetting, and decay theory. Such fun. Keep working hard and have a psychedelic day.